Hi friends, it's Michelle Pegler of Gingy Makes Quilts. I'm gonna do a short video today to show you some ways you can be efficient in piecing together a large complex block like these ones I've been working on for this Hope Koala's Quilt by Elizabeth Hartman. So this is a very fun pattern to put together, although it's pretty intimidating uh, before you start because every one of these koala blocks is 72 individual pieces of fabric. Um, there's just so many little uh, squares and rectangles and you know corner corner triangles you have to put on. So it's it's pretty daunting. Um, but Elizabeth Hartman, the genius that she is, has designed this block to go to go together actually pretty easily. Um, there are only a couple spots where you have to match up seams where like the points should theoretically match so there's a couple here uh, at the top of the head where the ears come off and then another one here at the neck but other than that pretty much none of the other <laughs> seam intersections matter like it will look good even if um, they are not quite where they should be so that is very cool uh, that I learned after starting this block um, another thing that I really like about this block is that her cutting directions and I've blocked out all of the dimensions on here. Don't wanna share um, her intellectual property, but uh, what I really appreciate about this block is that the cutting directions for um, you know, all the ear pieces and all the body pieces allow, to, allow you to use directional fabric and it's kind of intended for you to use directional fabric. So like you can see here for the body cuts, there's two K pieces that you cut. So those are the same dimensions, but she has you cut one vertically and one horizontally. And that's because they sit vertical and horizontal on the koala layer. So for me, I'm using this striped fabric uh, by Tula Pink. And that was really helpful because that way all my stripes can run um, the same direction on that whole koala body. Um, so I really appreciate that. As I mentioned, this block actually is fairly fun to put together. There, um, so there's no half square triangles in this entire block. It's all using corner squares or something like corner squares for every single um, part of it where you get a diagonal uh, seam. So the pattern will tell you to, um, you know, first work on putting the face pieces together and then get the whole head together and then it tells you, okay, now work on the, the arms and getting the body parts together, then work on the trees um, until you can, you know, ultimately put the whole block together in these big chunks, right? And a lot of quilt patterns that have complex blocks write the pattern that way so that you can go through, you know, one tiny section at a time and then put it all together in the end. So that's fine if you wanna do it that way, in that order, that's great. That's not what I do on most blocks like this. I have this cut for my next one I'm making, this purple block. Um, and the way I like to piece together complex blocks like this is to try and minimize the number of times I have to go back and forth between my sewing machine and my iron, and sometimes the cutting table when you have to you know, trim off corner squares. Um, if you're a quilter, you know that that kind of is is the base of quilting, right? You have your sewing triangle and that's your sewing machine, cutting table, and your ironing station. And you are constantly moving between the three until you get a finished quilt top. So for me, I try to be most efficient in how I uh, spend my time at each of those places. And so for instance, rather than you know only putting together the head pieces, getting that all done, and then coming and putting the body together, um, I do it all kind of at the same time. I kind of parallel process it. So what I like to do is lay out all the pieces on a design board. Now, this pattern <laughs> is too large and has too many pieces for even my biggest design board, which I think is an 18 inch square. So there are some pieces not quite on here yet uh, to make the tree and the leaves over here on the right side. I'll add those together after I get some of this together. But this is essentially how I approach it. So I lay it out on the design board and with corner squares, I kind of set the square on the corner that I know it needs to go on. And I don't do any marking. Um, I can show you how I do my, my diagonal seams here in a little bit, but I just, I just set them on there. So like this forehead piece is gonna get a corner square 
on that top right corner and another one on the top left corner. Um, and I've done that for the whole pattern. And then I go to the sewing machine with my design board and I do as many seams as possible all at once before I go to the cutting table and the ironing station to iron them all. Um, and in addition to that, I try to start with the pieces that have the most uh, seams that need to be sewn on them. So for instance, um, like this piece right here has just one seam. It's just this corner square is gonna go on this corner. That's all I can do for that piece before I need to go iron it because it needs to be ironed before it can be, con can be connected to any of these others, right? Um, but like the nose piece, gets four corner squares. There's a corner square that's gonna go on each corner of that black nose. And so I'm gonna do all four of those, which means I'm gonna start with that one, go do some other ones, cut this off my chain piece, come back to it, do a second, etc. cetera. Um, so I'll, I'll show you that at the sewing machine, how I work through it. But um, that is the general approach, is I like to um, you know, do as many seams as possible at each time I sit at the sewing machine so that my, my total trips to the ironing table are as few as possible. Um, let me show you a little bit about how that works. So I've done quite a few of my pieces so far for this block. I'm chain piecing them together. That means I don't um, you know cut the thread between each one. I just kind of keep pushing them through with just a little bit of um, thread between. So I'm going to show you one corner square and then uh, I'll show you what we've done so far and how it can kind of go back on the design board and you can keep uh, iterating through more of those seams before making a trip to the iron. So I have to put this corner square on here. Go ahead and flip it. Now again, I, I think I mentioned, you know, some people like to mark these. I really never do um, because I have marked on my sewing machine these lines. So I have a, a center line that lines up with my needle and then I've got a quarter inch line on each side. And so when I'm doing corner squares like this where I need to sew a diagonal line from point to point on that um, top square, I'll just put it right up against the needle, that first corner, and then align this back corner with my center line and sew it. And I'm, I'm pretty good at keeping it straight. and just keeping those corners together the whole way through. I get very accurate results with this, um, and that's you know without needing to mark it or uh, to pin the pieces together. So that helps me go a little bit faster. Um, so like I mentioned, I have a bunch of pieces done, at least the first round. So I started with the pieces that need more than one seam sewn on before I go and iron them. Um, so I've got these just scrap paper, scrap fabrics that I use as leaders and enders between pieces sometimes. I just throw them on my table. Um, so for instance, this is the koala's nose and I've done one corner square on it so far. It's gonna get one on each one of these corners and they don't overlap with each other. Um, so you're able to do all four at once before going to trim off the corner that you don't need and then iron uh, the seams open. So what I do is I just, you know, cut these all apart with the, the scissors I keep right next to my sewing machine. I'll usually put them back on the design board where they go to kind of keep track of, uh, you know, where everything's going. So, you know, I would take this, I would go put it back where it goes on my koala face. Um, and I've done so many of these blocks at this point, I don't really need to, to reference the pattern. Um, so I know where all these pieces are gonna go. But if you need to look at the pattern when you first get started with this method, you can. Um, I will show you what this all looks like after I get through all the seams I can possibly do and all the um, trimming and ironing. And you'll see how much I got done in just that one pass. I actually wanted to show you a couple of quick ways of trimming corner squares, which blocks like this tend to use a lot of. So uh, one thing I like to do is on a piece like this that has two corner squares, I actually trim both of those at the same time by using my square ruler, lining up the seams on those quarter inch dotted lines, and then you can trim the sides pretty quick. And then for other pieces that have only one seam to trim, like this, I actually trim a bunch of them at the same time. So I pick a line on my cutting mat, 
um, and I line up the seam with that line. Then I just start stacking these, continuing to line them up with that same line, top and bottom. You can do a ton of these at a time if you like. This pattern only has about eight or 10 and I tend to do them all at the same time by making this stack. So once I have them all stacked up, again, I bring my ruler over, line up my quarter inch line on the ruler with that seam line all the way down, hold it really tight. There's some pretty thick fabric layers here. So I push a little harder than normal to make sure they don't budge as I trim all of them off. So now these can be ironed. So first round of sewing and ironing is all done. You can really start to see that koala face come together, which is adorable. Um, this is how far you can get in just one round at the sewing machine. Um, so like I mentioned, you know, the nose that gets four corner squares on it, you can do them all at the same time. And so in this round, I'm gonna do, again, as much as possible before needing to um, iron any seams. So like for instance, there's, there's this whole column on this side. I could put all of those together. Same on the left. Um, I'll be putting together the top three pieces across horizontally. Um, yeah, some things down here with the body as well. And uh, yeah, just a few more rounds at the sewing machine and I will have this koala block all done. So here is my finished block. It is beautiful. I have two more still to make for this quilt. And I counted up in the pattern how many trips to the sewing machine it would take if you follow the pattern exactly. And I think it's around 19. So um, with the parallel processing though, I have it down to only nine trips back and forth from the sewing machine to the iron. So that is what uh, has been keeping me sane as I've been putting together these very complex blocks and they have been going pretty fast, as fast as can be, I think. Um, but it's been really fun. So look forward to another video in the future, probably talking about some custom quilting once I have all this pieced. Thanks for watching. Bye.